a new film or a television series like Golden Years means one thing to Smith, a new challenge, and he loves it. Action! People don't call me unless they've got a problem. And uh, that's the fun part, because it's usually something that maybe it hasn't been done before, uh, maybe it's a different kind of effect, or maybe it's just a very complicated, realistic makeup. I think at least 50%, I would say, of the reason I won the Academy Award was because of Dick Smith's makeup. You, you could almost tell immediately that uh, he was an ace, that he was the best that there was in what he did. And here was this guy who was paying, being paid an enormous amount of money to get to make sure that this effect worked. He would stop and explain A, B, C, D to everybody what he was doing. And I thought, that's such a, such a uh, generosity of spirit. I hired Dick Smith because of his tremendous interpretive abilities to do other than monster makeup, to, to, to make someone's face altered, but not um, transformed in such a way that it appeared to be artificial. Most anybody you work with in, you know, in the industry now who can do those kind of makeups has learned in one way or another from Dick Smith. There's never going to be another Dick Smith. Dick is without a doubt the greatest makeup artist that's ever going to live. I have always found all my life doing makeup, 46 years, that the most wonderful moment is when the makeup is on, the pieces are glued on, and the color starts going on. And instead of rubber, it now starts becoming flesh, face. How does one kill a man? Uh, it's one thing to dream about it. It's very different when, when you... when you have to do it. with your own hands. And at that point, you get what I call the Dr. Frankenstein syndrome. It's alive, it's alive. You feel like you've actually created this person. You have done a godlike thing. You have, your, your creature is coming to life. Dick started doing makeup while he was at Yale, making himself up as various monsters and scaring his classmates. As Mr. Hyde, he even had the campus police chasing him. I was no longer Dick Smith. I was this other creature. And, well, it was kind of like I didn't become an actor, but I wanted to do this. I wanted to create makeup. Smith got his start at NBC television in 1945. He taught himself as he went along, doing complex work like the elderly Queen Victoria makeup on Claire Bloom. Live television was the perfect training ground for the young artist. By the time he left NBC to work in feature films, Dick Smith had created makeups for hundreds of shows. Once I worked with Audrey Hepburn back in the television days, and it took me, I think, an hour, the first time I made her up, just to learn how to do her eyebrows the way she wanted them. Was ma she made a fashion, I think, of rather thick, natural-looking eyebrows. But they weren't natural at all. They were very carefully penciled on. There are a lot of misconceptions in film makeup. One of them is that Marlon Brando had cotton stuffed in his cheeks for The Godfather. Not true. We made a dental plumper, which hooks in around the guy's molars, and it goes something like this, but of course it doesn't fit me. What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? If you had come to me in friendship, then the scum that ruined your daughter would be suffering this very day. And if by chance an honest man like yourself should make enemies, then he would become my enemies. And then they would fear you. It's what I used on Walter Matthau and the Sunshine Boys, Marlon Brando, and a lot of other people. And it, uh, it's a latex layer that goes on the skin, you stretch the skin and dry it, and it makes the skin leathery, and uh, it falls into wrinkles. It only takes a minute. When it's dry, you release the skin, and you get a great wrinkle effect. It certainly aged Walter Matthau, who was only in his 40s when he starred in The Sunshine Boys. 
gave me a big ball paint, grate it down here. I used the liquid to get even more wrinkled than I am. No, that was 14 years ago. Uh, and uh, it was amazing, because after that, critics like Pauline Kael talked about my hair all the time, you know. They, Thought I was, she thought I was either dyeing my hair or wearing a wig because of Dick Smith's magnificent makeup job. This is where it all happens, in this lab in his suburban home. Here, he creates his formulas and develops his special techniques. The very first time uh, I, I went to Dick's house, I drove up from New York City, and I, you know, I was told to come downstairs into the basement. I'd never met Dick. I'd never met Bill Hurt, who was, I was starring with in Altered States. And I opened the garage door, and there was a full-size nude statue of Bill. <laughs> you know, hello, how are you? And I came around this corner, Dick said, come on in. I came around the corner, and there's Linda Blair's head, you know, <laughs> sitting there. I thought, do I really want to spend any time with this man, whoever he is? You know, makeup is one of those things where you, you, you use a million different materials and items and so forth. Not only do you need all the conventional makeup materials, but you need all kinds of plasters and chemicals and, and solvents and uh, all kinds of things. And plenty of clay, because Dick sculpts every one of his three-dimensional makeups down here. From those sculptures, he makes foam rubber facial pieces called appliances. When these appliances are glued onto the actor, they flex and move naturally with his or her own skin. You could stand a little more red still. Mm -hmm. See, because I've got here and here. Spot. Like in the so cheek. Yeah. I also use my lab for doing rough makeup tests, like the one my colleague Carl Fullerton and I did on the star of Stephen King's Golden Years. Preliminary tests like these help find the right approach to doing a makeup. What makes this life all worthwhile is the creative satisfaction I get from a dream project. I'm especially proud of the makeup I did on 34-year-old Dustin Hoffman. And I am the sole white survivor of the Battle of Little Big Horn. Uh, uh popularly known as Custer's last time. Little Big Man was a big challenge to me, mainly because of the very old age makeup on Dustin Hoffman. Turn that thing on. I beg your pardon? I said turn that thing on and shut up. Now you just sit there and you'll learn something. I know General George Armstrong Custer for what he was. And I also know the Indians for what they was. One visitor to the little big man set was Rick Baker, at that time a Dick Smith protege. Today, he's one of Hollywood's top makeup men. Dick applying the little big man makeup was the first time I ever, ever saw any makeup artist apply anything I, I, other than stuff I tried on myself. Yeah. And it was really a very learning experience to see how the master did it and how it was really done. He actually gave me some, some appliances from little big man that I used to stare at, and, at you know, this close to my face and look at all these little details and these wrinkles that were so beautifully sculpted I had no concept how he could possibly do that. I, I have a huge collection of old people and I found one picture of very interesting lip wrinkles, a formation, and I incorporated those into the makeup. I found pictures of people with wrinkled old earlobes, and so I used that in making his false ears. I designed this eyelid so that it would uh, have a, kind of like a cording-like material that it could stretch easily and blink with the actor's own eye when he blinked. Practically every wrinkle there was based on some real photo of an old person. What's it like to wear one of Dick Smith's makeup creations? Well, I know from personal experience, for the miniseries North and South, he helped turn me into Abraham Lincoln. It so happens that I have a copy of a life mask of Lincoln taken in 1860. Hal's face is actually 
off in a number of ways, which makes it a problem. It's broader, actually. So Dick used thin, subtle cheek appliances to give the illusion of strong cheekbones without making the face broader than Lincoln's. When we return, you'll see more of Dick Smith's magical creations. For North and South, was more or less a standard time, about four hours. Gluing on the appliances, it's the toughest part of the job. You have to get them in the precise position in which they were designed to go. If they're off a fraction of an inch, it can ruin an effect. The edges have to go down beautifully so that when you put the makeup on over it, you can't tell the difference between the, the rubber and the flesh. After that, it's more time spent on other details. Getting on the eyebrows and all those things, you know, very precisely. It is like surgeons work in that your hands have to be steady and mine aren't always. The shape of Hal's jaw is different from Lincoln's. So I changed some of the shape of the beard in order to try to make him look as much like Lincoln as possible. Will the South be allowed to take by violence? But they could not win in an election. The issue here is not just the fate of the United States, but of the whole family of man. It's common nowadays for pictures to contain a variety of bizarre makeup special effects, but there was a time when no one knew how to do these things. Here, too, Dick Smith broke new ground with his work on pictures like The Exorcist. <laughs> Finding the right makeup for Linda Blair in The Exorcist was perhaps one of the hardest things I ever did. And Billy Friedkin, the director, and I uh, struggled with this through many, many tests and failures. Probably the most uh, important thing that sticks out is the convincing nature of the demonic makeup. And that, that certainly, certainly has to go to Dick Smith. For he is really, uh, in my opinion, a singular artist. To make this little apple-cheeked, butterball-nosed, beautiful little girl 12-year-old into a demon was an enormous challenge. There's a passage where uh, she has a particularly bad bout. She takes this um, silver cross and cuts scars into her own face. The many different cuts and scars uh, that were on her face that were very carefully positioned to give a kind of distortion. In other words, one would say, make uh, accent this cheekbone. And I place them to try to modify the roundness of her face. Of course, Smith has worked on some pictures where his work is a bit more startling. In Alter States, we made two suits for Blair Brown. One the crew called Rare Blair, and the other they called Burnt Brown. <laughs> there were two different stages of my having been consumed in these suits. I got this out of the attic just to see what it would look like now. Uh, this is the suit that Blair Brown wore in Alter States at the very end. Uh, where she's supposed to be a, a burning, burning cinder. And it's made out of foam rubber. It's all sculpted. And special reflective material is painted in the cracks so that when a, a film of molten lava was projected at it, you saw what appeared to be molten lava in all those cracks. And it gave a great effect. Actually, wearing the suits was extremely hot. And particularly when you were under the lights and they were doing a lot of effects. So sometimes you'd have to sit for a long time under the lights while they were trying to figure what effect they'd use. And Dick would stick little hoses, little air hoses, in various little <laughs> inserts, which was quite a thrilling experience, I must say. It was very hard, I know, for Bill Hurt because he had one suit in which his arm 
was tied up behind him like that. And again, it seems like nothing. You think, well, that's not uncomfortable. Then you do that for X number of hours, and your, you know, your your circulation gets all strange, and your body your body's going, get me out, get me out. <laughs> Blair Brown, William Hurt. Dick has been fortunate to work with some of the best actors in the business, people like Jack Lemmon, Jeremy Irons, Robert De Niro, and Roy Scheider in Marathon Man. One of the reasons he's so respected and so revered in the business, especially by other makeup men, is that uh, Dick has no secrets. What he, what he finds out, he wants everyone to find out. And, and I think that's, that comes from a joy in his work. He gets a great deal of joy of what, he, of what he does. A skilled actor is a blessing to a makeup artist because a great performance really brings your makeup to life. When I worked with F. Murray Abraham on Amadeus, he reminded me we'd worked together before and I couldn't remember. He was a mechanic in the Sunshine Boys. The next time you have a chance to see some little kids playing a game, you will find that they are completely absorbed in what they're doing and really believe who they are. To me, the best acting is a return to that state. And the only way for an adult to do it easily is to put a mask on. That's what Dick has done, a really very good living mask. Now, when I was doing Murray Abraham's Old Salieri for Amadeus, it occurred to me that his forehead is actually about the same size and shape as mine. And I have a fair amount of wrinkles. So what I did, was to wrinkle up my forehead and make a mold of it and by a technical process transform it into an old age forehead which fit Murray perfectly and and works works great go on mock me laugh <laughs> that was not mozart laughing father that was god that was god laughing at me through that through that obscene giggle F. Murray Abraham did such an incredible, magical job of acting that old character that it, 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 it truly made my makeup. It brought it to life. And I think without that, I, I, I don't think I would have gotten an Oscar. One day I will laugh at you. Before I leave this earth, I will laugh at you. <laughs> These days, I leave those 4 a.m. calls and 18-hour days to younger makeup artists. I work as a consultant, supervising makeup for films and TV shows like Stephen King's Golden Years. My God, you dyed your hair. Not a strand of brown to be found. Harlan, come inside and tell me why you didn't want to talk to me on the phone this morning. I think it might be just as well if we talked out here, honey. You're scaring me a little. I think I want to. I don't want to give away the story, so I'll just say that you'll understand the makeup challenge of Stephen King's Golden Years when you see the show. On this job, Dick's working with two former protégés. Carl Fullerton designed and sculpted the actual makeup, and Neil Martz is applying it for the shoot. Their work is first rate. If you want to be a makeup artist nowadays, you've got to absolutely have the passion for it. Uh, you've got to be a little nuts. You've got to be like a concert pianist or a ballerina or something like that, where you dedicate practically all your life to this. My makeup career has been like a wonderful marriage. 46 years of a lot of excitement, love, some bad times, but it, on the whole, it's just been a tremendous part of my life, and I've loved every bit of it. A spirit of sharing, imagination, ingenuity, and exceptional artistry. These are Dick Smith's enduring gifts to the makeup profession and to all of us who love movies.